Mold testing is a hot topic. It's a question that we get a lot about. Yes, we do mold testing. A lot of times we'll have requests for home inspections and they'll automatically say, should I do a mold test? Or we'll get a call and somebody will have some specific concern and they'll say, I wanna do a mold test. Let's clear up a little bit of terminology first. Uh, first off, mold testing, that's kind of, it's very loose and it doesn't really explain anything. Uh, the terminolo terminology that we use, First off, we're gonna say mold assessment, uh, and then we're gonna say mold sampling. Those are the two definitions that we use, or the two uh, terms that we use, and I'll define each of those. So now a mold assessment is going to be about a visual inspection, locating moisture sources, locating visible indications of mold or mold-like growth. Mold sampling is going to get more specific into collecting samples, taking those to a lab and having those analyzed to figure out if we have mold or how moldy something is. Now, I'm doing an inspection now and there are several different spots where we have mold-like growth, uh, but this is all a visual part of our inspection when we do a mold assessment. Now, I'm doing a home inspection now, but part of our home inspections is to check for indications of condensation on surfaces, which would be mold. <laughs> You're going, if you get condensation on a surface, it's going to form some mold-like growth, and so we have to report that. So I want to take you and show you several different examples of where we're going to see it in a house um, and then how that could translate into potential testing. Now this house is under renovation. Um, there's a lot that's incomplete but we do have uh, areas where there is mold growth on the surface. So this is a door. This is the first place that I noticed. We can see the spores that are on the door. It's on both sides. So we can safely assume uh, obviously, I didn't test for that, but we can safely assume that this is probably mold. It looks just like mold. <laughs> it smells just like mold. Uh, so we can pretty much say that, yeah, that's probably mold. Now, can I actually say with certainty 100% that this is mold? Not unless I test it. If I took a swab sample or I did a tape lift and took this to a lab, they would analyze it and they would say, yes, you've got mold spores. Here's what you have on that specific spot. So at that point, I could say, yes, 100% fact, this is mold. We, we can very, very, very safely assume this is mold without taking it to a lab and getting it sampled. Now, another spot that I noticed it was down in this corner. You'll see the black on the drywall some more over on that corner as well and then there's I don't know if this will translate to the video but you can see some discoloration on that drywall too now again I did not sample this area but we can safely assume that that's likely mold third spot this will be my final spot that I show then we'll backtrack and kind of talk about some of these situations we'll take a look in the crawl space and you're going to see the same stuff on the floor framing system I don't know if you can see it, but in that corner there's some crickets. Those crickets are hanging out where it's nice and damp. Um, you can see some dampness on the walls. You can see the dust collection and probably some more microbial growth on the ductwork. You can also see that there is no vapor barrier on the ground. All of these are conditions that are conducive to elevated humidity levels, thus having mold growth. Now. Another spot that you can see too, these are just some scrap pieces of material, but you can see the spores on those as well. So should, should we do a mold test here? <laughs> no, <laughs> why? Uh, that would be my first question. If somebody wanted to do a mold test, my first question would be, why do you want to test? And my statement to follow that up is going to be, we have conditions that are conducive to mold growth and we have visual indicators that mold is growing in several different spots. If we perform an air sample, we can very likely assume that it's gonna come back and have a high moldiness reading. Um, and even if it didn't, that's still not gonna make us feel comfortable because we can actually see this stuff on the surfaces. Uh, air sample is a, a pump that we set in the middle of a room and we pull air across a cartridge and whatever's in the air will get collected in that cartridge and we can analyze that. So if, there's mold, if there are mold spores in the air, that would come up in an air sample collection. If that air sample collection tells us that there's no mold, 
I don't trust it. <laughs> we can see the mold. Um, we could perform a, like I said, a swab sample or a tape lift to identify those species that are on the wall, um, that are on the door and in the crawl space. We can identify what spores are there, but again, what is that going to help us? Now I will say, if a person is allergic, if they're highly allergic to some specific spore and you want to identify that spore, if that specific spore is in, in the house, that's where mold testing or sampling would make sense. I would actually say, okay, if, if you're looking for, let's, let's just use for instance, instance stachybotrys. That's going to be black mold. That's the most frequently talked about mold. On that drywall paper, we can probably say there's, there's some stachybotrys that's there and we could do a tape lift or a swab sample and take that to the lab and they could confirm, yes, you do have some stachybotrys. That doesn't address the source. It doesn't address the cause of it. And mold assessments, that's where, again, back to that term, the visual inspection to identify the source of the moisture is much more important for me, from my perspective, um, just as a general rule of thumb with assessments and mold testing and mold inspections. The most important part is identifying the source of the moisture. We need to know what's causing this mold to come up on the surface. We need to address that. Then we can backtrack and clean up what's here. Um, we can clean up what's on the joists. We can clean what's on the doors and on the walls. But we don't need to do that until we, we identify moisture sources. Now, using these as rough examples, I think the door is probably a result of this house is under renovation and it hasn't had heating and cooling. So I would say the fungus and the mold that's on the door is a result of lack of humidity control in the house because of lack of operation of the HVAC system. The mold that's on the wall behind the washer dryer, that could be a combination of a past leak with the washer dryer. It could be the lack of operation of heating and cooling. But this area also backs up into a crawl space where we see that we have moisture issues around the perimeter. We have a humidity issue in the crawl space. So I think there's probably a couple of different sources for that drywall um, related to direct water source, maybe from an old leak, but also humidity control in the crawl space. Now the crawl space is probably going to be the most complex in terms of addressing. Um, this is where you get into the conversation of encapsulation systems. Um, you're dealing with perimeter moisture. I can tell that there is some dampness along the perimeter walls. So we've got exterior water source um, or water entry sources. We don't have a vapor barrier on the ground to just stop all the dampness coming from that soil. Um, and then you get into the conversation about open air crawl spaces in East Tennessee <laughs> and how uh, a lot of times they don't perform like we think that they should or would. Um, so I think this crawl space is likely a good candidate for possibly a perimeter drain if we can't control water on the outside. I think encapsulation would be good here. I think you need to close off the crawl space vents, do a dehumidification system underneath to handle the, the humidity. I think a vapor barrier on the ground um, and, and sealed against the wall as part of that encapsulation system would be wise. And then um, all of this at the same time, you can have the fungus cleaned and treated. Um, we want to check for structural integrity of that wood as well. So each circumstance has a different source and, it, and inevitably because there's a different source of mold um, then the the method of correction is going to change with each one um, the crawl space has its own system that needs to be installed um, the interior surfaces i think probably with the door you go ahead and just wipe the door down and then address heating cooling operation maybe do a dehumidifier it's a basement so maybe that as well um, and then with the washer dryer I think you probably, at worst, cut out a piece of sheetrock. Um, that way you know that you got that contaminated sheetrock out and then put a new piece in and then make sure your new washing machine doesn't leak and the correction in the crawl space will help the drywall that's behind where that washer dryer was. So each circumstance, different solution um, because the culprit is a little bit different. Does mold testing make sense on any of these? For me, no, I don't, I don't see that it does. We have issues that need to be addressed from a, a root level of controlling moisture 
by way of either direct water source or humidity. Um, we need to correct those first and then we need to clean and treat and, and properly dispose of any fungus that's on the mold that's on the surface. Once you do that, maybe testing at the end of that to be sure that the air is cleared. That would be the only time that I would see that would make sense. Um, after you get everything cleaned up, everything addressed, come back through to do a visual inspection or a visual uh, assessment for mold and, and conditions conducive for mold growth. Um, but also at that time, if, if you felt necessary, that's where you would do mold sampling um, just to see if the air is clear and you've got all the, the spores out of the air that are potentially harmful for you. So hopefully this gives a good understanding of how we approach mold assessments and mold sampling. Um, I think that it's very careless to go straight to sampling and say that our samples will basically show us the problems and show us the solutions. That's not the case. I think the mold assessment will be the most important and the most critical part um, to this uh, mold testing or mold, the, the, like I said, the whole mold assessment. Um, I think the visual inspection is the most important part of all of that. So um, feel free to reach out with questions. Um, again, hope this, this helps clear up some of the confusion and, and some of the uh, broad terminologies that we use.